What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be working on the hatch and my brother's car. We're going to fix his power steering leak and I'm going to fix my clutch master. Hey, let me show you guys. So this is the clutch pedal. You guys hear that? Because the rod inside there is actually, actually broken. So I need to replace that for sure. And if you go underneath, you can see it's leaking. Most of the times, if you have a, um, a mess up master cylinder, let me show you guys real quick. This is a, uh, this is a brand new OEM clutch master. Okay, so that's that. Here's the part number. This is off a EM1, I believe it's all the same. And I think I'm missing the boot right here. Unless the OEM ones don't come with the boot. But this is a OEM clutch master cylinder. Most of the times if they're going bad, they will be leaking from here. They'll be leaking down. See how it's wet? Normally if it's wet, it's going bad. And that's why the fluid turns dark because it's letting air go in. That is why. We're going to be replacing it with a brand new one. I decided to go with OEM because this is, I believe it's like a ZD one, but I replaced that so many times. I had this one on my car for probably like two years though, I think ever since I finished the car. But it was going bad slowly because it was a used one. And I just said, fuck it, might as well go and replace um, the whole thing. So we're talking about brand new cap. I don't know if you guys even care about the part numbers. Brand new cap. This is the hose. The retainer clips, the little C clips. The reservoir. And this is the bracket. So it's gonna replace that whole thing. All right here. And bleed it from the slave down there. So. Uh, gotta do that. And what's up with this camera? This camera doesn't focus sometimes. It's annoying. It's kind of dirty. What I'm gonna first do is actually vacuum out all the old fluid. This is like a little vacuum pump. Uh, let me raise up my head real quick. And so you can see how dark that thing is. Now we're just gonna pump this thing up. Probably one of the coolest things ever. See how it's sucking it out. So that's sucked out. Now, if I do take this out, fluid is gonna come out. So I'm gonna take off this. Well, I need to take off this ground, and then uh, put a rag down there so it doesn't spill anything. And I am running the rye wire clutch line. Uh, gotta take off that fitting and put on the new one and we're going to be going underneath the car this is probably the most annoying one since my seats don't slide back Ugh. two of those 12 mils right there if you can focus so take off two of those 12s take off this little there's a little pin right here this little pin on this rod you'll pull that out with the little um cotter pin and then uh, it just comes right out. Really easy, it is really tight. Um, especially in the engine bay now, since we're running so much stuff in there now. And having a bad clutch master cylinder, you do have kind of bad clutch engagement, which was what I was having, it was like thudding because of the um, the rod, you could hear it. So I took off the reservoir, I have my line right there. And what I normally like doing with my vacuum uh, pump is I like sucking all the air out, or sucking all the fluid out of this, so when you take out the master, nothing spills out. It'll make a mess and also if you're running like any clutch line or anything make sure you don't lose the copper washers and just let it sit there now to go inside and take out from the inside so now what you want to do is take out this cotter pin if you never replace this i normally switch flip the cotter pin around and once you got the inside sorted out we're just gonna pull it straight out I put my finger over the hole so no flu comes out. Cool. So, so I can see it's kind of busted in there. 
So quick tip, before putting this in, you always want to make sure this thing is, because from factory they're like this. Um, so the cotter pin is just like this. So it makes the cotter pin or the clip that it uses more of a pain in the ass to take it out. So what you want to do is flip it around. So you run the cotter pin this way. So you can put the pin in this side. So later on in the future when you replace it, it's a lot easier compared to squeezing your hand inside a tight ass spot. But yeah, this rod's broken. I decided to take off this boot off of this old master. There we go. That boot slipped right on, fit perfectly. And this is trash now. Now to put this all back in and bleed the, um, the master in the sleeve. And like I said, quick tip, put this thing on the inside. So it's easy to remove later on in the future. Thank me for this later. Everything is in. Um, I did kind of go overboard by buying a new reservoir, a new cap, new bracket, and a hose. You don't need to. The only reason why I did it was because, just because I wanted to. But you don't need to. You just need to buy the master. If your hose is still good, just reuse yours and the reservoir. I just did it because, I mean, you guys can kind of see why. Um, nowadays, if I replace anything on this, I just go straight up, just replace it all at once and don't have to worry about not being able to get it later on because a lot of the Honda parts, they do get discontinued. It is a common thing. And uh, yeah, and sometimes the warehouses around um, the country, they don't really have any more in stock. This is the old little reservoir. Still looks good, you know, but it's weird because the caps are different color. You use this one so it can match with the Brake Master. And I did replace that Brake Master. I think I said that in the last video. It's a brand new SI Master. Had issues with the other one leaking. And I believe it or not, I already bled it. It's the same thing as bleeding brakes. How I do it is I just get a bottle, put some brake fluid in it, run a aquarium tubing to the bottle, all the way into the bottle, and when you pump your brakes, just make sure you check on the reservoir and fill it up, and it, will, it won't suck air back in. I think I did a video of that on my old videos of doing brakes. Uh, you can bleed your brakes by yourself and your mask or your clutch. And everything. I think I said I was gonna work on my brother's car today, but believe it or not, this is actually the next day. I already fixed a leak on my brother's car, replaced the power steering fittings, the two dash six A and fittings with O rings. So I put O rings on the fittings, so there's no way for it to leak. Because for some reason, from Chase Space, they come with a crush washer, and that crush washer it got warped, and that's what was causing a leak. So I took that out, just put in some like random O rings I found in our O ring bucket, and it's all good. Not to show you guys what I just bought. These are actually C28s. Just a pair of them though, because I need spare wheels, just in case anything. These tires are way too fat, so I do have to change the tires on them. And let's see, Ray's Engineering. These are cool because these are 5 by 14 of course, and these are actually 16 by seven and a half plus 42, or 45. I don't know because, oops, there's no no stickers on this, but telling by or by looking at the hub, these are pretty high offset, so I think they're 45s or 42 offset. I was doing hella research just to try to figure out what spec these are, but these are 16 by 7 half, 42 or 45. And it's only a pair of them. And I got them for extremely cheap. Good uh, beater spears. Or I could run them in the back and have the concave look in the front and then the convex in the back. So cool. And I think these have been resprayed. I'm not too sure. I don't know if they came originally in black. I believe they did, but uh, I, don't, I don't know. And another set of wheels. Um, I've been buying a lot of wheels from Japan and locally because one is sometimes they're just so cheap that I can't pass up on. And these ones that are in these boxes were especially cheap. I'm so glad I got these. And I might actually put them on the car just to test fit and see what they look like. Um, hopefully, as you know what these are. Voila! So these are actually pretty light, and they're forged. These are called TE16. So not TE37s, but TE16, TE16. And I believe these came out first before the T37. So this is before the T37s. And these are actually in kind of rough condition, um, but nothing that, you know, a rim repair guy or people that refinish wheels could fix. 
and I believe it's kind of pitted but I'm not tripping about the price I actually might just put on some tires and just run them like this and the cool thing about these are is one they're five lug and they are uh, focus focus 16 by 8 plus 33 so these are five millimeters difference between these C28s and hopefully these clear my spoon calipers because you can kind of see um, the hub is it's all right so I'm just gonna slap these on real quick on one side and see what they look like and yes I do have the full set here's the other two the reason why they're like this is because I opened it and checked it they need some love uh, but this one's actually oh this one's really clean actually but need some love I could probably just clay bar or something or just rent it like this because this is all original from 1997 the cool thing about I like about Rays is they tell you when it got manufactured. So this is June 6th of 1997. So these are really, really old. Uh, these look like pits, but it's actually surface. But this one right here needs some love. Nothing that, like I said, someone could refinish. What I'm going to do now is drop the hood down. Take off my C's on this side and put those on and put some wood underneath just so I can see what it looks like cool all right uh, and I might just try these on uh, just cuz I think they will clear my spoon calipers just to do how the just because of how the faces are on C's I have the front on. It does clear the caliper. So. Whoa. Damn, they're a bit chunky on spokes, huh? Yeah, don't worry. I have run the camera on it, so they'll, they'll drop down into it. Holy crap. All right, now I gotta put the rears on. And uh, I haven't showed you guys this, but Well, I say what the specs are, but God damn it, come on. There you go, 16828. Such a good looking wheel. And then you got this one that needs some love. Oh my God, not gonna lie, these look pretty cool on the car. Uh, it gives it that like early 2000 vibe. I just use two wood blocks just so I can try to get the car to kind of be even with, um, uh, kind of even. Just so I can see where it's gonna sit. I'm gonna be running the same size tire. Oh, sick. I know, right? So, yeah, they, that's pretty sick. What do you think? You need tires? I, well, yeah, I need tires, but. Here's how the rear sit. That's pretty badass. I definitely will go get tires. Oh, here you go. Here's a better look. Cool. I just drive them like this. Driving on a railroad track. Now to check up on the leak. Is it still leaking? Uh, you didn't leave a rag underneath? I did. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's dry, okay. How yeah. about the front right there? Dry? Yeah? Yeah, it's pretty dry. No, is it wet? No. Do you see anything on your hand? It's pretty, it's just... This is dirty. It's okay. good, so the O-rings work. What do you use, O-ring? Yeah, cause look, I threw it over here cause it made me mad. You see that little, oh, right. yeah, they'll give me one washer. That little crush washer they gave me, that little one right there, it got warped, putting it in, I don't know how. So, 
I mean, that's what chase fades provide with the kit. So I take those fittings off and use O-rings, like what you'll use for fuel, and it's not leaking anymore. Yeah, it's full. That's good, right? Yeah, it's perfect. Perfect. All right, all leaks done. But oh my god, that looks sick. I really need to go get tires for these real soon. Probably order some uh, from Steve tomorrow. Oh, let me. Close that hood. Oh my god. That looks sick. Woo! Cool. Alright, so I'm gonna get tires. I'm gonna get the same as these because they are the specs are really close. Uh, I'm running 205s on these. These are 28 offset, these are 33 offset. So the 205 45s will give me a little bit more gap, but I'll be able to turn because with this setup. I do rub, but it's not to the point where like it'll mess up my fender, but I do rub. And I don't even feel like trying these on, because I know these are going to be sunk as hell. But cool spares, doesn't hurt to have two sets of wheels. Let me move this box real quick, still got, alright, let's do that. Oh, that is so cool. I still love the C's, but these actually give that kind of a cool little look to it. I might not even refinish these. I should just leave them like this. They kind of look messed up on the inner barrels. Like, I think you can see better on this one. Kind of like just banged up. But I'm going to try to clean up the faces using a, using a clay bar. And holy crap. And these are stickers too, by the way. All right, so... That's it guys, hope the next video I'll have tires for that. This looks sick. Love it, hate it, pretty gangster. So, um, yeah. Oh, here's a photo when I had weds on the car. When I, right when I went, uh, five lug, right when I first went to five lug, and these are the first set of wheels I got, these TCO fives. And I just decided to give white another go, and I like it, so. Peace out guys, don't want the others, just keep building. Stay tuned for more updates. Not updates, well, just me trying to work on my car, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah. Oh, and uh, here's a C28 on this side. Bronze, can never go wrong with bronze. And, I guess now I could say I can never go wrong with white. Full as well, because I have a color match hood now, and no more SR bumpers, but, yeah. All right, peace out.